Right. Um, so, as I said with this assessment, so obviously you've got yours in front of you. Any corrections you can be putting on won't take too long. Um, so, the big thing with this, these questions, was I said to you beforehand, you get quite a lot of credit just for selecting the right mats, even if you then make mistakes. So, initially, basically your first credit comes from, is this a Pythagoras' theorem or is it a trigonometry question? All right, so if I look at this, I go through it. These were all questions apart from the last one that we've done before, by the way, in that booklet, those booklets I gave you. Um, we've got to work out QR, so I'm going to put an X on QR. Now, is this Pythagoras or is it trigonometry and why? Why? Exactly, there's no angle, therefore it's Pythagoras. So I would be writing straight away, I know this is Pythagoras' theorem, so I'm going to be writing a squared plus b squared equals c squared. We have been working with the boxes, right? The squares, because that's what it is. Um, I'm, I'm happy to see that as your working aid. And then we say, right, which one's which? So big one, well, this would be 16. So this is going to be 16 squared. All right. Um, this shorter one, I'm going to say is 8. So this is going to be 8 squared. And this is going to be x squared. Okay. Which will give me the x. Right. So then I can write out. 8 squared plus x squared equals 16 squared. Yeah? By the way, I'm going to rattle through this relatively quickly so we can get on with the other things. So if you want me to then print off this afterwards, we can do. All right. What do we do at this stage? What do we do now, Alistair? Um, square them. You can square them. So, um, do you know what I will offer at this stage? Is we could, because of, let me see whether I've got it still open. On the Desmos calculator, let me, all right. This is quite useful. I'm actually going to say that x squared is 16 squared minus 8 squared, yeah? That is, and then x would be the square root of 16 squared minus 8 squared. How, how do you feel about me just doing that? Is that all right at the moment? I've not worked out what the squares are. Now, there's a reason for that, okay? Because I find it, when, on, when I've got access to this calculator, the question was, do the square root, just click it, of what was it, 16 squared minus eight squared, and just press enter. All right, and it gives me my answer. I don't actually need to work out all those other steps. How does that sit with you, does that? It's Pythagoras' theorem, as we remember. Pythagoras' theorem was about the squares on the sides of the triangles, not, yeah? So we have, now, of course, I could just do 16 squared equals, what is it? Doesn't appear on my screen. Oh. 256. So I could have done this. I could have said, well, Another way to do it would have just been to, I think, which is what I definitely saw Alice there doing. 8 squared is 64 plus x squared equals 256. Then x squared is 256 minus 64, which is what? 192. And then x is the square root of 192, which equals... 
Yeah, so we've got 13.856. So 13.856, but to two decimal places, it's going to be 13.86, yeah? And what did I get if I do this? I get the same thing, 13.86, all right? Now, you can see, if I am okay with just putting it into my calculator and not working out, what, what does that do for me in an assessment? If I just put that straight into my calculator instead of working it out, does that help me in any way? Faster. Just a little bit faster, yeah? And also, it's potentially meaning that I, I don't, like, if I work that out wrong, press might make a mistake. So get, you know, having the, and I found, when I was working out the answers to this on, and I have my laptop and my mouse in front of me, all right? It was super quick. You just tap, 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 done. Much quicker than me, much quicker than using a calculator in your hand. So actually, for me, and you see it all there, and you remember what you can do in your e-assessment with the cal computer calculator screen? Copy and paste. Just copy and paste. I could copy and paste all of that and just bang straight in, and there's my answer, right? So makes it super quick. That's why we're practicing it. Because remember, Pythagoras' theorem is the big square on this side is equal to those two added up. So if I know the big one and I don't know one of the small ones, I need to subtract that from there. Do you remember doing this? So take what I know away from that one, and what's left must be that one, yeah? So that's a real fundamental thing. In fact, I believe all the Pythagoras ones I've done here are subtractions, aren't they? I think I did. All right, next question, just quickly. Identify Pythagoras or trigonometry. Why? There's no angle. Yep, same again. Calculate the length of CD. CD is this one again. Right? I just chuck this one in because we did it. It's a, a rectangle, but we know there's a triangle, right angle triangle, so we can use Pythagoras. Same thing again. A squared plus B. As soon as you write that, bang, I give you some credit. Because I know you've picked the right maths. All right? Now the next credit is, can I get this right? So small square plus other small square equals the big square. So this would be 10, this will be the x, this will be the 17. So this will be 17 squared, x squared and 10 squared. Yeah, exactly the same process as last time. So what do I do? I'm going to write 10 squared plus x squared equals 17 squared. What do you do now, Sienna? Yeah, not yet. 17 squared minus the 10 squared equals x squared, yeah? Now, what are you happy with? Uh, should we square root now or should we work those out first? What, what are you happier with? Should I work out what 17 squared and 10 squared is or you should to square root, okay? So x is the square root of whatever that is. And if we put that, can you, you should put that in your calculator now, just check that you're okay with doing it. So you've got that in front of you. So put that in. So seven, the square root of 17 squared minus 10 squared without having to work anything out. So the square root of 17 squared minus 10 squared, press enter, I get 13.7477.
13.7477. Give my answer to one decimal place. So that would be one. Thirteen point seven. I would say, what what should we always do? What what's I've worked out that final number? Check it. Check it. How do I check it, Alistair? What's the first easiest form of checking? It's the same with all of my questions with triangles and thick shapes and things. No. My first, remember the thing you did not do, therefore you forgot a step in one of your questions. The check is to go up to the diagram and put it in, yeah? 13.7, why do we do that? Because this number is not allowed to be bigger than this one. And it should be around about the same sort of numbers, right? Alistair will tell you about the mistake he made. I'm this question, give your answer to QR, put an X in there again, Pythagoras' theorem or trigonometry. Why? Because it has the angle. So what do I do to show I know that? I write Sokatoa, the angle, the opposite, the adjacent, the hypotenuse. What's the angle? 43. Where does X belong? A, good. And 5.8 is the... Okay, so I'm going to cross out the O, which means I cross out sine and I cross out tangent which means I need to do the cosine of 43 equals x divided by 5.8. Now, even just getting to that point, you get loads of credit. Yeah? Because you picked exactly the right thing, tr trigonometry, you've picked the correct ratio in cosine, you've identified the sides correctly, this is the adjacent, this is the hypotenuse, all of those things will give you credit. And then your final step is just to, we times by 5.8 on both sides, we get x equals, in our calculator, 5.8 times the cosine of 43 is 4.24. Okay, so I've got x is 4.24, uh, sorry, no, I write 5, 4.24, does that make sense? Yeah, what, just to check, three significant figures, I've done three. Yeah, so I'm, I got lucky there because I didn't check it first. All right, but that check, it's shorter than that, it should be, same rule applies, and it's roughly in the right area. Okay. So you did 5.8 multiplied by... The cosine of 43. Yeah. And then why did you do times by... Because x divided... So remember, what I had originally is cos of 43 is x divided by 5.8. I want to know what x is. How do I do it? I multiply by 5.8 because that gets rid of... That leaves me with just x, yeah? But what do I have to do to the other side? The same thing, so I have to do 5.8 times the other side. That's why I did it. All right. Next one. What is it? Pythagoras trigonometry? Made very nice. I put Pythagoras and then I put trigonometry. That's not always going to be the case. All right. How do you do it? So, go to theta opposite adjacent hypotenuse. Theta is x. 
Vale. O is nothing we don't have. A is 3.9, 4.7. Okay. So I'm now going to use cosine again. So cosine of x equals 3.9 over 4.7. Just writing all of that, you get lots of credit. Okay. You show all that very clearly. The final step is what caught a couple of people out though, which is we have to do the inverse cosine of 3.9 divided by 4.7 and I get the answer to what x must be. Yeah? Um, I put cosine x I know you uh there was a little bit of communication issue going on there, but you ended up with the right thing and you know. Would that be the same? Is that possible to have the cosine of x? Oh. No, not really. No. no. What you wrote doesn't really make a lot of sense, but kind of because of the question you're doing, you would have you probably would have got away with what you wrote. Because you generally did the right thing. You knew you had to do the inverse. You knew you had to do the... When you wrote cosine of x, that, that's kind of an incorrect statement, but you didn't do anything with that. All right, so that's purely a communication issue. How do we put that into our calculator? Good. This is where we get used to using it. Function, cos minus 1, back to main. I can just do 3.9 divided by 4.7. Okay, close the brackets, press enter. I get 33.923. 33.923, but I need it to one decimal place, so that is... 33.9 degrees. Okay. How do you know to do the minus? Because, because you have to get the... Because I have to find the angle cap. Yeah. So. This is one, remember, I talked to you about your rounding. So again, what... um. Do you notice how I just put that straight into my calculator? Well, what you could have done, which is what Alistair did, is do 3.9 divided by 4.7. All right? If I do that, 3.9 divided by 4.7 actually equals 0 0.82978. So let me just write that down. Okay? 0 0.82978. Okay, now, if I do that on my calculator, all right, function inverse cosine of um, 0 0.9, what was it, 2, 8, zero point eight two nine seven eight eight two. Eight two nine seven eight. If I put that in and press enter, I still get. Oh, I, I did it wrong. Let's do eight two nine, and I get thirty three point nine. The same thing. Now, what happened was, just so you're aware, um, Alistair did all this again correctly. But what he did was he rounded and when it's cos cosine to the minus one of 0 0.82, okay? And he got an answer of 34.9 degrees. Okay, what was the mistake? Rounded, but not just rounded, but rounded incorrectly, yeah? Because instead of it being 0 0.82, it should have been 0 0.8, Three, yeah. So it should have been not that it should have been cosine to the minus one of zero point eight three, 
If I do that on my calculator, look, um, cosine to the minus four, let's, let's get rid of that. If I put in just a three, you notice how I still get 33.9. It's not quite the same as 33.923, but to one decimal place, it's exactly the same. So just that one mistake of rounding it to two instead of a three, that puts me a whole degree off, a whole one degree. Now, I said to Alistair and his work that I didn't consider that much of a problem. Okay. Um, a little bit of credit gets taken off for your rounding, but in terms of doing everything else correct, spot on. All right. But you can see how your answer, because he showed me all his working, I knew what he'd done. All right? I knew where the mistake was. But if he hadn't, I'd have gone, no, nope, wrong answer. Because I wouldn't have known why. You could have done something completely wrong and just got something close. So it's good that you showed all your working. So this was incorrect rounding. So can you see how actually with this calculator, just being able to type it in without having to, is really useful, right? Okay. Then the only thing I want to talk about with this one is, why did I check this one in? Because it puts it in a different orientation, right? So Pythagoras or trigonometry? Because, okay, we write, I'm not going to go through the whole thing, but let's do Sokotoa, theta opposite adjacent hypotenuse, theta is 32, y, z, that's that one, that's the x, where does the x go in this list? H, good. And where does the 5 go? The five is the O, this is the adjacent next to the angle. So this time we're actually using sine. Otherwise it's the same process as before. But um, I guess with this one we'll do sine of 32 equals five divided by X. All right. This one, how do we work it out? I'll just rewrite it over here. Sine of 32 equals 5 divided by x. How do we rearrange it to find the x on its own? No. Yeah, this is the one where we times by x and then divide by that. And it looks like we just swap those two around, yeah? And that gives me my answer. So that's why there's a double thing with that one. Not only was the triangle in a different orientation, but finding the hypotenuse is a, you know, you've got to make sure that you don't just automatically always just times by the number that's on the right hand side. You need to think about it, a bit critically thinking. All right. Let's look at the final criterion D question. Um, this was a criteria D because you had to select the maths yourself. There's no diagram to look at. You're going to have to create your own. So we've got a ladder. It's placed on horizontal ground, resting against the vertical wall. All right, let's draw a diagram first. What will it look like? Here's the ground. Okay, here's the wall. Here's the ladder. That's what it's going to look like, right? Makes sense. It says, first off, a ladder is six meters long. Where does that go on my diagram? The pink part. So that's going to be six meters. The instructions say the ladder um, the bottom of the ladder must not be any closer than 1.5. So the ladder will reach six metres up the wall if you can put the ladder against the wall. Why don't we ever do that? Yeah, it just falls back, yeah? So we have to have it sloped. It's all a real, like, you would do this. 
in your head, you would go, well, where's safe on the ladder? All right, so you know you lean the ladder, you know you don't go too close, and you know you don't go too far, but too close is what we're talking about. What's the limit? Well, the limit is 1.5 meters, and it wants to know if you put it as close as you're allowed, how high can we get up? What are we using, Pythagoras or trigonometry? Pythagoras because no angle. I did, I was tempted to have a second part about the angle. I thought, no, it will take a bit of time. So potentially I could have introduced an angle in here as well. So we're going to use Pythagoras' theorem again. A squared plus B squared equals C squared. If we want to keep with the squares that we've been doing before, where, which goes where? So this is six, so this will be six squared. One point five, so this is going to be one point five squared, and this will be x. Okay, so one point five squared plus x squared equals six squared. So this is the same now as you did in the first couple of questions. How do we rearrange it? x squared equals six squared minus 1.5 squared, therefore x is the square root of 6 squared minus 1.5 squared. And I believe, having done it to one decimal place, we get 5.8 metres. If I put that on my diagram, that does make sense. Uh, someone, I think put an answer that on a six metre ladder you could be reach way above six metres, which definitely didn't make any sense. Okay. All right, that's the calculation bit. Now the other bit for criteria D, um, I've not written on that, I added it to yours. Comment on the, what did I say, comment on the decision by, or the instructions. Comment on whether you think this is a sensible statement by the manufacturer of the ladder. Now this enables you to discuss anything you can think of that would be pertinent in this problem. What do you think? Sensible solution? Yeah, why? Why is it set? So you don't fall over, you don't fall backwards, we can write that. Anything else that we can maybe take into consideration? I would say something like, well, how much are we missing? Because you wrote, oh, we can't reach the whole way, yeah? But how far can we not reach? How much does it take off the reach? So a ladder is six meters, so potentially we could reach six meters if we put it. But 0 0.2, so six meters minus the 5.8 meters is only zero. How many centimeters is that? It's only 20 centimetres. What would be your comment on, like, is that a big issue? Like, not being able to reach that little 20 centimetres? Can you show me 20 centimetres with your How? How long is the ruler? So it's, it's only kind of, it's a small amount when you're considering six metres, right? So does that increase his safety and doesn't really impact how high you can reach very much, does it? So those are things, so you will notice, um, I know it's, it's hard because you don't really have the structure, but if I take you all the way back to the beginning with the criterion pages, you will notice here, look, identify all the relevant elements of the situation, okay? And decide whether it makes sense. So to get top scores in a D, there wasn't much to this one, but there was definitely 
identify all of the things. So it being safe and not toppling over, that's one thing. Being able to reach still relatively high, that's another thing. If you didn't include it, you haven't included it. Yeah? Is there anything else we can think of that we could talk about? <laughs> No, it's quite a simple situation, isn't it? So probably not. All right. Um, you might talk about, well, if we have it too far out, then it might slip. You know, they slip away, but we've not been told a limit for that. You could say maybe there should also be a limit for. Um, and quite often, by the way, um, there are questions that says, what's the highest and what's the lowest? We'll never be able to set it. There's only a range with a ladder, isn't there? If you yeah. put it up, if you put it too far down, it just, as soon as you stand on it, it slips. And if you put it too steep, as soon as you start climbing on it, you just fall backwards, all right? How do people negate that? They have someone stood on the bottom, holding it, right? Um, so anyway, those are the things we could have talked about. Have any questions over any of that? No? 